ladies and gentlemen, we are back for another Westworld after show spoiler discussion. If you haven't seen this third episode, highly recommend you go and check it out first before you watch this. We're about to break down a few different things, the spoilers in the next 20 minutes. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. It is me and my man Mike here. What's going on, Mike? Doing good. Um, sorry, there's just flying here. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You gotta stay away from the flies, man. <laughs> They're gonna get in your ear and mess you up for life. Oh, um, yeah. So yeah, so uh, me and Mike uh, have been the past two episodes. The second episode was a lot better than the first episode, but we've been kind of like feeling like we're spinning plates. It's like, where are we going? <laughs> like, is there? Is there something to why am I spinning a plate? And for me and from my perspective, this is the first time since this season has started where I felt like, okay, we're going somewhere. We're actually getting somewhere. And I loved what we got in this episode for a lot of different reasons. Um, But uh, Mike, what is your some feelings for this episode? I, I literally was saying it's like okay now this know who you are <laughs> like remember who you are remember <laughs> this is Westworld <laughs> like so go back to like roots of season like I it was weird to say this is like the moment I was like talking to Sam this I was like moment of the episode I was like okay this is what I'm talking about it's like I'm confused but I understand <laughs> like you know <laughs> right right You're like, like this is just like the first episode on, I'm but... just like. What right. season three of just like okay, this is getting convoluted. I don't understand like what you know. This is all right. I'm intrigued. Mystery reveal the pacing, no tension build up, no payoff. But also again, it just like the the way they used to do with turn how they narratively construct their shows and really by episodes because you know how it is like what might be different with timelines and all stuff which they did. A little thing at the end of the episode where you're like, wait, what's going on here? Ah, okay. Yeah. Right. So yeah, they're going back to their roots. <laughs> now this is yeah. back to Westworld. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I personally really think this is the best episode of the season so far. Um, and if this is where they're going, then this is gonna be leaps and bounds better than season three. So I'm loving that. So off rip. You know, it, it started off with a character we've been waiting for to see where he's been at, where he's at. And I'm talking about Commissioner Gordon himself. And we're talking about Bernard. So Bernard is back. But the last time we saw him, he kind of went under. And the stinger for the season was him waking up with dust all around him. We didn't know how much time has lapsed. We just knew that the Hemsworth character was kind of watching him. And he was going to try to figure out how to take care of things well he goes and does that but he's met with some interesting um thoughts and resolves from a certain other character from season two this is akichita akichita last time i think we saw him he went to the great beyond yes earned his place and made it but he's basically alluded that look i can give you a gift i can't come back with you to help but i can give you a gift this gift will allow you to be able to see everything as it's going to be. And so much like Dr. Strange in a certain perspective, Bernard had went through all the different scenarios of how the world could be able to possibly survive what's coming. Even more so than where the, the domino effect is already taking place because of these hosts and because of all the things that's been put into place. Now, one thing I love of bringing him in is he had one of the best episodes. Of, uh, of the West series. Right, right. And I love him as an actor and I loved his character and I love how complex he was. And so for him and Bernard to have a scene together in general is two of the best actors on the series. So I, I really love that moment with them too. Um, but when Bernard came out of it, um, he basically was like, look, this is what we need to do. And this is how we're going to have to be able to save everyone. The weird thing about what he was doing is he had to have looked at infinite different scenarios of how things can play out for for seven years. Right. So much so that the smallest little details, even though he's been sitting there this whole entire time, he knows exactly where things are going to be and how they have to be. But it's not just like, okay, I know where the car is outside. 
I know we have to go and get gas and the gas is going to be at this price. Like, no, there's different variations where this could be deviated a little bit. And it, it adds stakes to it. Like, it's not just like, oh, okay, I know how to say the world. Like, no, we, we have to make sure this all lines up perfectly or it's not going to work. How did you like Bernard being back in this? Um, Jeffrey Wright is easily one of the greatest actors, you know, period. Uh, but having him and the Hemsworth bag, um, what was your take on them? Again, I was waiting for that moment, like at the end of season three, where they ended off where like the last shot of the uh, the series was him in a dusted up room and everything. It was like, wait, is Hemsworth still there? I'm like, no, he is. He just didn't clean up around the place. But you know, <laughs> um, but yeah. But again, it, it just could tie that loose thread. Like, all right, okay, now we know what you went. Now we understand it's been. What we saw there was seven years later at that shot, and here we are seven years later in the time of this show. But no, again, first of all, Bernard is my favorite character of the show. Uh, you know, he was my person I followed through. Like, if he's, if he's gone, I'm not watching the show. Like, <laughs> like it was that, and, you know, with a whole Bernard and Arnold reveal and everything, the storyline going through uh, from season one to season two, then going to season three where it's like, okay, you know, you don't know what direction he's going to and everything because mm-hmm. it really that story was on with the situation with Dolores, Maeve, and you know, the Hale situation and everything. But now, um, and now it's like, okay, now we're getting him some points, but still, it's also getting to a point like, well, he knows more than the audience, but in a yeah. way, like, okay, I'm following this, I'm liking this. It's not, you know, it's like, I already know how this is going to play out, which is which is really weird, you know, and this is not, it's not, he's like in a simulation, like, this is the real world. <laughs> right yeah he's like oh, i know how this is gonna play out like yeah you're not gonna reach your gun before you know <laughs> uh you don't have time to reach your gun and then he just went and, and it's like wait what about the car if we don't need it and then here you go and he just the car just pulled up um right. and everything he just uh I, I like that again like you mentioned like it was kind of like that dr strange thing like i see all the possibilities but it wasn't rushed like you right. you like yeah you stay with it and again Back what I'm saying was season three, what it didn't do was that when things were convoluted, you didn't know what was going on. And 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 also and went to a point when they were revealed, I'm like, you didn't even care. Like it just at this point, just like, okay, well, I've been through this for nothing and everything. But now it's like, all right, adding emotional development of like, okay, you're introducing new characters, but also the characters that were uh, previously introduced in previous seasons, you know, we are now into a point now like we're seeing them being utilized in a very emotional way. Like, for example, uh, with Aaron Paul, you know, he had to deal with trauma with his best friend, you know, that he killed and everything in um, and season three. But now he's in a position now he's married, he has a child and stuff, and how that's also used to manipulate him. And then in the episode, yep. I thought that was a very well-acted scene. I, mean, I almost teared up for a second, like, that ain't his daughter. I mean, like, if it is, like, man, I'd be messed up. But, um yeah, man, the way they just do children today in, in modern medium today, I don't know what's going on, man. Protect your children, y'all. Yeah. Um, yeah, to close out my thoughts with the whole Bernard thing is we still don't know how much, how far this is disconnected from everything else from the normal timeline, right? Yes. We yes. don't know if this is on track where Maeve, you know, Caleb, whatever the crazy Dolores is, we don't know who's on what track. And that's always right. been the stick with, you know, with Westworld in general. But this is a weird thing. This is the first time this arc has been introduced into this season, and it's already the most interesting one. Like, right. Immediately. Um, and that's why I said from the beginning, like, if this is where this is going, I'm all the way there for Because just like Stranger Things, just like great shows, they have to come back together. They have to come back together to give congruency. So um, I'm all the way there for that. But then, like you said, the whole Caleb thing. So Caleb and Maeve, they kind of go through the this, this simulation of Westworld. Is you know, it's just a little different because the mobster version. Everything seems like they're setting themselves up. They're trying to infiltrate. They're getting down into everything. Maeve's kind of like she's kind of entertained by the whole entire thing, but. She's mm-hmm. being very cautious too. So then they get down to the levels of where, you know, all the different hosts are being taken care of. And then all of a sudden, wait, wait, wait. is that Dolores? Is that Teddy? What in the world's going on? Like, you've seen, you've seen the same clothes and stuff. And Ooh. what they found out right. is that they made a game of the Westworld Massacre. And I'm like, right. of course. Right. Like, of course. Like, and, and, and then what I like about it, 
that this show with well, this episode hit on for you being a fan of this show is like hitting nostalgia of season mm-hmm. one. But again, it's still questioning reality. We see the same scene at this point four, four or five times uh, mm-hmm. of, of the going into the bar, having, you know, people trying to rob the bank and everything and all that stuff uh, with the gang and stuff like that. But then we're seeing so the same characters in the same narrative, which is, again, that's the whole thing. They talk about storylines. But with this whole thing, the whole thing about the show is questioning your version of reality. And at that point, it's like, oh, they're not. They're out of the game. No, they're not. They're still in it. <laughs> right. still in it so i thought that was just nice they just got kept going on with that um and yeah they just again this just going ahead to the roots of this show from where they have stared back from so that's the thing right. i'm just like all power to them hopefully they can continue this thread the rest of the season but yeah dude and i think the funny thing about how that went down is you you started to notice something was off when yeah the westworld situation happened Maeve got shot but one of the things that Westworld's always done, and I think it happened first to William, humans always get manipulated by the Westworld world, right? And when Dolores got shot some kind of a way, right. and then, you know, Caleb, I'm sorry, when Maeve got shot and Caleb had to go and try to save her and start working to try to get her out, I was like, okay, he's starting to get a little too into this. He's starting to get a little emotionally triggered. Then they go to, they start to see the fly. They start to see what's going on. They start to see the human testing that's going on. And you can see over Caleb's face, like he's starting to not only get scared, but he's getting emotionally compromised. Because initially he was just point and shoot. Like, I'm, I know why we're here. I know what we have to do. But then it was like, no, humans are getting, they're being like killed. Like, what's going on here? The funny thing about how they set this up, though, is with the daughter and with the mom. Because... We saw the daughter. She's out there trying to contact her dad. Mom seems really naive, just trusting this random guy that Caleb sent. And then, of course, the daughter, we see, this is the funny thing. We see the guy being like, oh, I'm going to show you the kung fu moves. And then the guy forgets that he showed her the kung fu moves. It's like, wait, whoa, hold on. He might be a host. There's something wrong here. I thought he was a host when he first walked up. (laughs) Right. The only thing that gave me grace was the fact that Caleb picked him out. I was like, okay, Caleb wouldn't bring him there if it wasn't somebody he actually legit trusted. Um, but when he didn't remember, and then the little girl saw the blood trickle out, she's seen that body, I was like, oh man, what is the mom going to do? And then the mom starts panicking, and they go back and forth with different sections, which is good for Westworld, because you don't, you kind of like, they leave you on edge and they come back. They leave you on edge, they come back all the way down to the mom fumbling with the gun and we're like oh man she ain't ready you know goes back to the little girl and the last thing we see is the little girl about to get snatched up so we you know from a normal audience perception not somebody like us we watch everything in the free world we're always analyzing what the possibilities could be but somebody that's watching this like probably you guys you know probably like oh my god they got his girl because they never showed how much time had passed, right? right? So it's it's plausible. In my head, I was like, it's not possible. But it's plausible that it could have been because they keep playing with time. But the moment that Caleb sees his little girl in there, and he knew where that was going to go. I was like, oh, my God. Either one, this is the worst thing that's about to happen to an individual. And we're gonna have to witness it. Like, oh man, we're a Game of Thrones level on this one. <laughs> like, you about right, to really have this right. little girl shoot herself, and the father can't do anything. But I, I, I was kind of like, I don't know what to feel here. But this is where finally they're using Aaron Paul's acting. Acting. Capability. Thank you. They're giving him something to do, and that's what I said from the beginning. It seems like okay, you, you all last season you wasted him. And now you're giving him something that he's good at, which is and, acting. And oh this is one on one in terms of what you guys are either directing or as you're an actor. If not, sometimes even your ability as an actor is just what's the director how he can utilize you in the store in, into the, what the story is actually trying to tell. And right. one thing is that you need to know uh, not only of Aaron Paul's you know, track record of his, you know, he can go to these ranges if you actually put him in that position. Uh, mm-hmm. and in in the story, to actually give him that performance. But my thing with that is like, season three is just like, okay, 
oh, I, I knew with the directors, you know, they're saying that, hey, they want to you know, see someone as the average guy, the average Joe, whatever. But I'm like, OK, but in the way you position, like, I know that what happened, that outcome was not Aaron Paul's fault. You know, right. in terms of like how that storyline went at is like because sometimes people as an audience member think, oh, it's the actor's fault and something like, no, this is written hor- like this is just story which is not written uh, uh, poorly in terms of their, how their character was fully developed. You know, right. so that yeah, that with this, I'm like, yeah, utilizing Aaron Paul and using his gifts and his talents in the best way possible. Yeah, it was so weird when I saw season three of um, Westworld. I was like, did he fall off? Then I looked at El Camino. And I was like, no, he still got it. He just they didn't give him something to do. And right. and and it's like in a small amount of time, they showed different ranges of him. They showed his fear, they showed his desperation, they showed his willingness to help. Um, and they also showed his value, the humanity value, which that's one of the things about Westworld is so core. If everybody is a host, what is what are we really fighting for? Fighting here? for. Right. And so when now you add a stake that now humans could be subservient to the machines by these flies, that added a different level to it. Because it's not just a human getting killed, it's been being enslaved. So the the literal the shoes are being turned. Um, we've seen what these people have done that are controlled by these flies, what they're capable of doing. I don't know what happens from this point because as soon as the daughter's mouth opened up and then we go and flashback to show the mom did handle business. She got her kid out. It's like, okay, that's not her kid. And then it's like, crap, he's stuck. And I, I don't know if you agree. I feel like all oh, this was to get them there. The whole entire thing was a ruse. The Westworld the plotting it to getting him emotionally invested to getting him right there, even showing like how everything was going to happen. Because I was like, you know, why show these humans killing themselves? Why show it like that? Because right? it's again, what they do is that when you make a sport out of us killing ourselves, we're going to make it a sport of killing you. And that that's it's the irony, you know, the same thing with William, what he had to do in the beginning of season one, uh, before we saw younger William, as he was the human, like, I don't want to hurt these are people. Like, no, but again, this is a park, you know, and being manipulated by the older um, uh, Delos uh, brother um, or um, this, uh, the brother-in-law, right? Mm-hmm. And um, and then with that, how now he's corrupted. Now he's, this is just also just an aspect of, him, of humanity, like who you are really in yourself. So when you brought that out, it's like, okay, I'm going to take advantage of this park. So in season two, you get to see, Oh yeah, I'm seeing these now as property. I'm seeing these guys as objects and everything like that. And him going to the person of him becoming the man in black. Now you've mm-hmm. seen that spend all these years. All these years. You have to understand. Like, <laughs> understand what timeline. It's been almost over what 50 years or 60 years in terms of of in this world of them using hosts and, and using these parks and all this stuff like that. And the riches of the rich going to these, you know, doing, you know, some of the most God awful things just because nobody's watching because they have money. So again, is that now they see this, you know, this revolution of them seeking consciousness. It's like now, okay. The irony of like, Hey, your sins and all that, that your debt's going to be paid. It's humanity. Mm-hmm. It's like, you make it a sport out of us. We're make a sport out of you. We're going to treat you guys as test subjects. You guys going to be in the cage. You know, it's right. like, it's like the whole thing of like, um, it's never funny when the rabbit's the one having the gun, you know? Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, that's what I think that's what they're doing and trying to give that there. But again, I also, as a science fiction fan, love what they're doing with this type of thing with the flies. Like, I love, I'm, I'm a sucker for that. Like, when I'm watching them going down into the hallway and you've seen them using organic material with like using maggots and the flies and all that stuff and knowing what they're trying to do. But what it is that the flies are actually trying to be attracted to humans, not the hosts. Mm-hmm. And to a point they're being responded with a frequency that only the hosts will know and not them. I just, I thought that was just, <laughs> even though it's all you no know, made up, I'm like, still, I love the complexity of it. I'm like, yeah. The only thing that I'm going to say, um, that I feel like is a flaw. I wish they hadn't have done it. Cause when I was when he when when Caleb went down there and he saw her, you know, look like I guess the flies had gotten in her. I rem- I all of a sudden had this flashback to the first trailer. And I, yeah. I, 
initially I thought it may have been Mayi's daughter, but then I was like, I looked at this scene, you know, when I was watching it live, and I was like, I wish they had never put this in the trailer. Because this to me, my head went back to the trailer as soon I was like, this ain't this ain't uh, I immediately thought that's not his daughter. Hmm. I immediately thought that because of the trailer. That's the only flaw because I feel like if I had not had any preconceived notions about that or even remember that it, this would have been this would have shocked me it, the weird thing is that it still shocked me and messed me up because I was like I didn't know the context behind it I didn't know Kayla was going to be the one set up I didn't know I would gravitate towards oh okay what does this really mean because I was like is the little girl dead you know I didn't know because they could have just killed the little girl right and then it still could I didn't know the context but either way it still hit but I think it would have hit differently if they had never put that in the initial trailer. But yeah, I think this was a great episode. Uh, my closing thoughts: I, if I had to give it a rating A to F, this is an A. A to A minus is the best episode so far um, this season. Mm, absolutely, like I was saying, yep, better. <laughs> just like keep uh, now, <laughs> now, and now we're getting the ball uh, moving. So just I hope they just be consistent. You know, that's. Um, then we didn't see no Dolores. We still only know where she's at. Or if it is Dolores, who what's going on? So, right, you know, and yeah, again, we saw Teddy. We knew he was in the, you know, in that you no know, uh, cyber heaven and everything. So now it's like, hey, where is that threat going? Like that's so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you said, better butter. <laughs> and this man right here, Commissioner Gordon, saving the day. <laughs> yep, that's all we need, ladies and gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be back. Um, if you don't know or watch this right now, we are going to be watching Westworld. Oh, no, man, not Westworld. Watching Thor. Not Thor 1, not Thor 3, not Thor 4. We're dose. So watching War- Thor 2, uh, The Dark World, which has the best score. But outside of that, uh, we'll, we'll see. Just stay tuned. We'll talk to you guys. <laughs> Peace, ladies and gentlemen. Filing out the top of the world. I'm a sea skyline.